بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد If you look in the chain of verses in the Quran you're going to find that there's in Surah Al-Baqarah you're going to find the series of verses on Ramadan يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام Second verses أياما معدودات the third verse, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل في القرآن. Three verses after each other, consistent on matters directly pertaining to fasting. Suddenly you get to the fourth verse. It's not a topic. It's about du'a. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Then you go back to the fifth verse. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ It goes back to the rules and regulations of fasting. Why was there a du'a verse on du'a in between a series of verses directly speaking about fasting? Why would Allah put a, 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 a verse off topic? Is it off topic? Impossible. Every aspect of the Quran is perfected. There's a break in the verses of the Quran pertaining to the topic of fasting to draw your attention. To draw your attention to the importance of du'a that Ramadan is the month of du'a. There's times dua is more likely to be answered. And Ramadan is one of the best seasons for that. Look deeper into that verse. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ ذَا دَعَانِ Fourteen times in the Quran you're going to find and they ask you and if they ask you. يَسْأَلُونَكَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ Thirteen يَسْأَلُونَكَ in one وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ In every one of the times when, they, when Allah says and they ask you, you're going to find قُلْ and tell them. And tell them, except one time in the Quran, which is about dua. And every one of them, consistent. And tell them, and tell them, except in dua. If they ask you, there's no and tell them. It comes without and tell them. It's trying to convey to you pure tawheed. That this is a relationship between you and Allah directly. Not even the Prophet ﷺ. No messenger, no wali is between you and Allah. The dua is direct between you and Allah. It's complete. Tawheed, pure Tawheed. And that's why there's no Qul in it. The Dua is answered at all times in all situations. Allah answers at all times. Days, nights, evening, all situations. Stand and sit and lay in bed. In wudu, out of wudu. It doesn't matter. But there are times and situations where Dua is more likely to be answered. And let's take some of those tips so we can perfect our Dua in this month of Dua. And not only that, but we're never going to stop making dua after, insha'Allah ta'ala. First, pursue the special times. For example, the days of Arafat, the Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, the, uh, the, the one-third end of the night when it rains, when after Iqama, after they make Iqama, uh, between Adhan and Iqama, a fasting person, one-third end of the night, Allah descends to the heaven closer to the earth and asks, is there anyone who needs anything? Is there anyone who needs to be forgiven so I can forgive him? The more you combine of these special times and situations, the more likeliness the dua will be accepted, inshallah. Combining Ramadan, for example, with the night of Laylatul Qadr, with sujood, prostration, with the one-third end of the night, and look how amazing that is. Special times and special situation. So that's the first issue. Second one is, you can make dua anytime, in any situation, but be formal sometimes. For example, sometimes go make wudu and plan it. It's like a day. Plan it, go make wudu and pray to rak'ah. Face the qibla, be formal and raise your hands. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Muslim raised his hands once until his armpits were showing. White, the whiteness of his armpits were showing. Sometimes he raised it close to his chest. Sometimes he don't make dua with his finger. It's proper to make dua with your finger. إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيِّيٌّ كَرِيمٌ يَسْتَحِي مِنْ عَبْدِي ذَا رَفَعَ يَدَيَا أَنْ يُرُدُّهُمَا صَفْرَى Allah, the ever-living, the most, the most, uh, كريم, the generous. If a man raises his hand in supplication, he will be ashamed to turn his hands disappointed or empty. يَسْتَحْيَانِ يَرُدَّهُ مَا صُفْرَ مِنْ zero. He would never turn, you, turn your hands zero. He's ashamed to do that. Abu Darda used to say, raise your hands to Allah before they're fettered in chains. The next point. Make dua 
in a voice not too loud or not too low. When the Sahaba raised their voice out loud, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya ayyuha nas, inna ladhi tad'un, laysa bi asam wa la ghaib. In Sahih Bukhari Muslim, he said, you're not calling someone who's deaf or absent. And likewise, wa la tajhar bi salatika wa la tukhafit biha. Ud'u rabbakum tadaru'an wa khufya. Verses that mean, neither not loud, nor low. Fall away in between. And that's how uh, one of the manners of dua is. Zakariya, when he praised Allah, Allah praised him for keeping it in between, keeping his voice in between. إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّ وَنِدَانْ A next point on dua. Don't try to overly make dua rhythmic, like a poem. It doesn't really necessarily happen a lot in English. Don't, if it happens normally, okay, but to go out of your way and do it, that's wrong. That doesn't happen a lot in English, it happens a lot in Arabic, it's called sajja where they try so hard and go overboard and trying to make their dua rhythmic. Allah in the Quran says, اِدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيًا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ He doesn't like, when he talks about dua, he said at the end, he doesn't like those who transgress in dua. Some of the ulama consider this transgression, like saying, Rahman, Quran, Insan, Bayan, and going out of your way in doing that. Now even though it's not an issue in English, why I mention it, is there's a lesson to it. Why it's disliked by the Salaf, including a direct statement by Ibn Abbas in Sahih Bukhari where he tells his servant not to do that, it's because it takes out of the humility in dua. You need to communicate your dua to Allah sincerely in humility in a way you feel best comes out of your heart. That's the point of dua. It's not about being eloquent. That's not how it works with Allah. In this world, you got to be eloquent to get some positions. With Allah, Focus on humility, on sincerity, on getting your heart into your dua. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَدْعُونَنَا إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارَعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرَّعًا وَخُفْيًا Humility, sincerity. Next, be firm in your dua knowing Allah will answer you. أُدْعُوا اللَّهُ وَأَنْتُمْ مُقِنُونَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ وَأَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَ وَجَلْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ دُعَاءَ مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ In Sunnah Al-Tirmidhi, when you make dua, be firm and have your heart in it. Be firm that Allah is going to answer you. Don't say, oh Allah, forgive me, if you will. If you will. Don't say that. Say, oh Allah, forgive me, period. Firm and know that Allah is going to forgive you. Don't feel hesitant that Allah will not answer you. If you, if, uh, if, if Allah answered the shaitan, do you think he'll not answer me and you? The shaitan asked Allah. The shaitan asked Allah, allow me respite until the day they get resurrected. Allah said, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْضَرِينَ You are of those respited. Me and you are not worse than the shaitan. No matter what we did, we're not worse than the shaitan. Even though we have mountains and mountains of sin. If Allah did not reject the dua of the shaitan, will he reject my dua and your dua? Even though, even though, non-believers asked Allah, mushrikeen, worship statues, asked Allah sincerely at one point, Allah answered them. When they were in the oceans, in the currents, in the wind was about to drown them, they turned to Allah alone. They left shirk and turned to Allah alone for a moment. Those were people associated partners to Allah. People who Allah knew as soon as he takes them to the shore, they're going to go back to associating partners to him. Yeah, when they sincerely, for moments, invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He responded to their dua. If He responded to the dua of the mushrikeen, who for a short period of time did dua sincerely, you think He will not answer the dua of the muwahideen? Be persistent in your dua. And this is the A and B. When we say be persistent, it's A. First of all, make your dua in persistence. When you make it actually, when you ask Allah, Ask him over and over again. Plead and beg him. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ used to make dua many times, three times. Ibn Mas'ud said, used to make it three, three, three. Ask Allah three times. That's in making the dua. Then be persistent over time. If you don't get it overnight, don't give up. Make dua more and more. And don't you ever say, I'm making so much dua and Allah is not answering me. You negate your dua like that. يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُعَجِّلْ فَيَقُولُ قَدْ دَعَوْتْ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي فَإِذَا دَعَوْتْ فَاسْأَلَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا فَإِنَّكَ تَدْعُوْ كَرِيمًا In Hadith al-Bukhari Muslim, ask Allah Allah. There was some of the Salaf who didn't get what they wanted in 20 years. They said, we still have hope that Allah is going to answer us. Next point is start your dua and end it. And in between, find a spot to make salah on the Prophet 
Abu Sulaiman Abu Sulaiman al-Darani said a beautiful statement. He said, start your dua with Salaam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and end it with Salaam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Look at how amazing his statement was. He said, because the Salaam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is automatically accepted. And the most generous Allah is not going to accept the beginning and the end and leave out the middle. Always make Salaam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the beginning and end and the middle of your dua. In Sahih al-Tirmidhi, and Ibn Kathir said it's authentic, it's changed, it's authentic. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh said, Dua is suspended between the heaven and the earth. None of it is taken up until you send your blessing on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This may be a personal statement by Umar ibn al-Khattab. Because Umar said it. He didn't say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. But the rule on such personal statements is that they are, they are considered attributable to the Prophet ﷺ because these are matters of deen. There's no way Umar came up with this on his own. It's a rule on this matter and similar hadith like this. Al-Bayhaqi narrated a similar statement by Ali in Shu'ab al-Iman. In Shu'ab al-Iman said, Ali radiallahu anh said, himself said also like the one on Umar, every dua is not responded to until one sends his blessing out the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This hadith is also narrated by Baqi ibn Makhlad, by Baqi ibn Makhlad, Baqi ibn Makhlad, from Ali, Marfu' meaning that Ali said, the Prophet said it. So it's, it's all attributed to the Prophet and by uh, Baqi ibn Makhlad. Do you know who Baqi ibn Makhlad is? Baqi ibn Makhlad is the one I gave a talk, and I think a lot of you were in that talk. The man whose dua got accepted for a prisoner who was taken, and when he made dua, the shackle kept breaking and breaking until they finally released him. They said, Someone's been making dua for you. Listen to, I think the brothers uploaded that talk. The final matter is work on your internal matters. And that's very long. This whole topic is very long, but this is a super short summary. For example, repent to Allah before you make dua, return the rights of others, turn wholeheartedly to Allah, give charity. And rest assured, Allah will let you down. He said, ask, and I'm give you, and he will. Ibn al-Mubarak said, I went to Medina one time when there was a job. People went out to make a stisqa for a very long time. No one, and one day I went to the masjid, I sat next to a black man. He was wearing khash, which is stack clothes, which is rough clothes made out of camel's hair or goat's hair. People had gone for a long time. Allah didn't answer, and I sat next to this black man. Happened to sit in the masjid ne 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 next to the black man. His clothes was wrapped around his waist and one on his shoulders. And I heard him say, Ya Allah, you blocked the rain on the people to teach the sinners a lesson. Ya Halim, Ya Allah, Ya Halim, Ya Allah, Ya Halim, Ya Allah, the one whose servants see nothing but good for him. Grant them rain. Give them rain now. Give them rain now. 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 He kept saying now. As-Sa'a, As-Sa'a. Abdul Mubarak said, he kept saying As-Sa'a, As-Sa'a until clouds came from every direction and it began to thunder and rain all over. The giants of the ulama had been going for some time making istisqa. The rich, the poor, the leaders, the laymen. Yet this neglected black man with stacked clothes, where, where, the, the poorest of poorest clothes that they were at the time, raises his hands in dua and Allah answers him. My brother and sister, as members of the Islamic Ummah, you're held accountable for your shortcomings to your wrong Muslim, the ones who are oppressed. Don't ever let a, go, a day go by where you make dua for you, for your family, for your loved one but also every day include the oppressed and wrong Muslim. So at least when you stand before Allah, you said, Ya Allah, I made dua. Ibn al-Mubarak went to visit Al-Fudayl ibn Uyad, Uyad after this incident. Both giants, both imam. Al-Fudayl looked at the face of Ibn al-Mubarak, he said, what's wrong Ibn al-Mubarak? He said, there's other matters that beat us in. People beat us. He told them the story. They were agonized that how people worshiped Allah in secrecy, that they beat them, that they got there. Dua I, I, I answered. When he told Al Fudayl ibn Iyad, Al Fudayl ibn Iyad shouted and fell unconscious. A brother showed me a clip a few days ago of a group of Muslims being in a cell. And a judge with his chest up high, arrogant, issued the order on those that they be executed. Muslims, a group of wrong Muslims. They walked out and he walked out. They went to prison, he went. The days went on. The clip actually shows then that man, one of them, 
target. He said, we made Allah dua to Allah sincerely. That he grant us release from prison with honor. And we put persistent on it. And you know, when you're secluded and alone and solitary and you're tormented and tortured, the dua comes from the deep down bottom of your heart. He said, we thought someone one day was going to just come and dig us out of the prison. Or uh, the, the prison is going to bust open and break or earthquake is going to break. We didn't know how it was. We knew Allah was going to answer our dua. Suddenly one day someone comes with a key and opens the door. He says, you're free to go home. The world has changed. The leader of the country for a decade is gone and you're free to go home. In this month, activate your ibadah of dua. When you make dua, when you ask Allah, other than all the benefits you're going to get, merely asking Allah you get reward for. You know how you get reward for reading Quran? You get reward for dhikr? You get reward just for dua. Other than answering your dua, I'm saying. Yes, Allah will answer you that, but you get a bonus on top of that, that you get reward for meal because it's a ibadah. It's a ibadah. Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. So ask Allah and supplicate and turn to the one whose doors never close. Tomorrow we will continue on this topic, inshaAllah ta'ala. Ya dhal wajh al-akram. Ya dhal wajh al-akram. Wal ism al-a'zam. Wal atiyyat al-juzla. We ask you to hasten the release of all our wrong brothers wherever they may be. Subhanakallahum bihamdik. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullahu khayra.